If you are responding to a problem or unmet expectation in a kid, bottom line is you're either doing A, or you're doing B, or you're doing C. And if you're like a lot of people, you're doing A. A is when you impose your will. Now, uh, very popular, the runaway best seller option. It's where adults usually go when a kid isn't meeting their expectations. And a lot of us were raised on plan A, and a lot of us think we turned out just fine, which means a lot of us ask the question, so what's the problem with plan A? What's the problem with plan A as a way to get the kid to do something you want? Well, now I'm gonna divide the world for you. Challenging kids, not so challenging kids. What's the downside to plan A and challenging kids? Plan A causes challenging behavior and challenging kids. Plan A causes challenging behavior in challenging kids. Why, what just happened? You just threw plan A at a kid who doesn't have a plan A brain. Why doesn't he have a plan A brain? Having will imposed upon you, something most of us aren't all that keen on, requires skills to handle well. Many of them listed on the ALSIP. In other words, skills challenging kids don't have. If you throw plan A at a kid who doesn't have the skills to handle plan A well, the definition of maladaptive behavior has just been met and you have just greatly heightened the likelihood of this kid doing something on the spectrum of behaviors that people exhibit when they don't have the skills to do better. It's very reliable, in fact. Rewind the tape. On the vast majority of challenging episodes in challenging kids, and what will you find? An adult using plan a. Plan A causes, I thought we were trying to reduce challenging behavior. Plan A causes challenging behavior in challenging kids. That's a big downside. What's the downside to plan A in a regular old kid? Whatever that means. Well, now I'm going to get philosophical with you. Plan A in a regular, regular old kids have the skills to handle plan A well. They're not that keen on it, but they've got the skills to deal. The downside is that if you're busy using a lot of plan A, even with a regular old kid, you're busy teaching the kid that might makes right. And uh, I think might makes right is the wrong turn human beings took a long time ago. Right doesn't make right. So if might doesn't make right, why are we adults so busy teaching kids that it does? It's convenient. Plan A feels convenient. In a regular old kid, plan A can make something happen quickly. What's the price? Perpetual lessons on the might makes right principle. Plan B, as you can now tell, I spend most of my waking hours helping adults do less plan A and more plan B. Plan B is when you're doing the name of the model, collaborative problem solving. We're going to talk about that extensively this afternoon, so I'm going to skip it for now. Plan C is when you drop the expectation completely, at least for now. Now, many people hear plan C, drop the expectation completely, at least for now, and they think, oh, he means giving in. He does not mean giving in. Giving in is when you start with plan A and end up using plan C because the kid made your life miserable. That's giving in. But when you start with C, You've got a completely different mentality. Here's your mentality. You know, I know this kid. I, I know what skills he's lacking. I know what unsolved problems are reliably and predictably precipitating his challenging episodes. I know what my priorities are because I know I can't work on everything all at once. This thing that's still a problem is something I've decided not to work on right now. I won't even bring it up. That's plan C. That's not giving in. That's prioritizing, because you can't fix everything at once. So just as an example, what, 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 what might I use Plan C for? In some of the very volatile kids that I work with, teeth brushing might end up with Plan C. And many people have a great deal of difficulty thinking that the kid's teeth are going to be dirty. But if my options are as follows, I can push hard on teeth brushing now. Let's say this is my outpatient practice. I can push hard on teeth brushing, cause such a mess that I have to admit the kid to an inpatient unit about a half hour from now. Or, go with dirty teeth now, fry my bigger fish, solve my bigger problems, 
and then get back to teeth brushing once my big fish are fried? Well, that's the option I always pick because I really don't want to admit the kid to an inpatient unit over teeth brushing. Teeth brushing will go in C. I will clear some smoke, stabilize the situation, work on some of the bigger fish that I need to fry and get back to teeth brushing when the kid and the system, whether it's his family system or his school system, are able. Homework sometimes finds its way into Plan C. Want to spend just two more minutes on Plan A just so people know what Plan A looks like and just to put a little flesh on the bones. Pl plan A, once again, is when you impose your will. Now, Plan A is such familiar territory to so many adults, so instinctive for so many adults, that they don't even know they're doing Plan A when they're doing Plan A. So let me give you an example of Plan A. Kids, it's time to brush your teeth. That's not Plan A. Many people think just because they have an expectation and they announce it means that they're doing Plan A. No, your expectation is your expectation. How you handle unmet expectations is A, B, or C. If your expectations are being met, you don't need a plan. They're being met. Your three options, A, B, C, are for unmet expectations. Kids, it's time to brush your teeth. I'm not brushing my teeth. Now you have an unmet expectation. Now you have three options, A, B, C. Let's say you choose A. What comes out of your mouth? Something along the lines of, but you must. Plan A is when you say something along the lines of, no, or you must, or you can't. And just for the sake of clarity, you are most assuredly doing Plan A if you say one, two, three. I call that countdown to meltdown. Sometimes I call it meltdown deferred, deferred by three seconds. But it's Plan A. Count me out on Plan A. Count me out. What about Plan C? Plan C, once again, is when you drop the expectation completely, at least for now. What does that sound like? Kids, it's time to brush your teeth. Once again, you've done no plan yet, because you don't know if this is a met or unmet expectation yet. I'm not brushing my teeth. Now what's an unmet expectation? You have three options, A, B, C. Let's say you choose C. What comes out of your mouth next? OK. That's C. What have you just done? What have you just accomplished? You've reduced the likelihood of challenging behavior. Because you see, if you don't have the expectation, if you remove it, then the kid's not going to get upset about it. Now, I was actually modeling for you emergency C. But if you've prioritized already, and you've already decided the teeth brushing is not an expectation you plan to pursue at this moment, then you wouldn't even say, kids, it's time to brush your teeth. You wouldn't say it in the first place. It's been removed, at least for now. Plan B. Plan B, as you now know, is when you're doing the name of the approach, collaborative problem solving. So why are you doing plan B? Just to be crystal clear about this, because this kid has proven to us beyond a shadow of a doubt that he needs a tour guide, somebody, to serve as his tour guide for navigating problems and regulating emotions. Now, the, many people see tour guide and they think, wait a second, he's going to need a tour guide for the rest of his life? No, I've never seen that happen. Truth is, the minute he gets good at the skills you've been trying to teach, the minute the pile of unsolved problems that has been causing challenging behavior for Lord knows how long, once it's shrunk, you're fired. Who fired you? He did. Why'd he fire you? Because kids do well if they can. And once this kid has the skills and once he knows how to solve the problems, you're fired. Have you ever heard anybody say, we're not going to give a kid reading help now because he might need reading help for the rest of his life? No, the reason you're giving the kid reading help now is so he won't need reading help for the rest of his life. Why do we apply such a completely different mentality to kids with social, emotional, and behavioral challenges, I can only think of one reason. We didn't realize that it, too, was a developmental delay. Now that we know that, we are freed up to te treat challenging behavior in the same way that we treat other developmental delays. The minute I start talking about the plans, misconceptions spring to life. So I want to get rid of a few of them before we keep going. 
First of all, I think I've gotten rid of this one already, but it's worth repeating. Expectations are a good thing. Collaborative problem solving is not about dropping all of your expectations. The truth is, you can't even do plan B unless you have expectations. But now you know expectations of a certain kind. Expectations of the unmet kind. You do want to give very careful thought to whether your expectations for this kid are truly realistic at this point in his development. I don't really care what most other third graders are doing. I don't really care what most other 14 year olds are doing. I care what this kid is capable of at this point in his development. The goal of any intervention is to make things better. The goal of intervention is not necessarily to make the kid look like every other third grader or every other 14 year old. Can this kid do what we are expecting him to do? The plans are not a ranking system. A lot of people get the wrong idea. They think plan A is for the really important stuff, plan B for the sort of important stuff, C for the not important stuff. Wrong. A is in position of adult will. There's no ranking. A is in position of adult will. B is collaborative problem solving. C is dropping the expectation completely, at least for now. Plan B is not the average of plans A and C. There is no average of plans A and C. There's no average of imposition of adult will and dropping the expectation completely, at least for now. Truth is, if all you're doing is A and C, all you're doing is picking your battles. A and C is battle picking. I'm always fascinated to hear people describe collaborative problem solving as a battle picking model. Well, there's some prioritizing that goes on with collaborative problem solving, but it's not about picking battles because it's not about battling. It's about solving problems, teaching skills, that's what plan B is about. There's no average. Plan B is not a technique. Plan B is a way of operating with a kid who's lacking skills and has problems he's having difficulty solving. Here's why I don't like it being called a technique. Well, number one, in education settings in particular, there's the technique of the day, the technique of the week. I've never seen a field that has so many techniques being thrown at it. I've never seen a field that got so much advice about all the things that people feel it's doing wrong. Here's what happens. It's, if it's a technique, people drop techniques like a brick after about three days if they don't work very well. And here's the good and bad news. The good and bad news is that Plan B is not going to work in three days. That's the good and bad news. Why is it good news? Because it helps us understand that you're not going to totally transform this kid in one day. Why is it bad news? Well. It's going to take a while. Uh, I don't even apologize for that. Helping challenging kids takes a while. It took a while for them to become challenging. There is no one fell swoop approach to intervention. And finally, along the lines of time here, many people get concerned that plan B is going to take longer than plan A. The reality is plan B never takes as long as the challenging behavior we cause by doing plan A. There is no quick fix. This is not going to happen fast. In fact, show me a challenging kid who people are trying to fix quickly, and I'll show you a challenging kid. It is taking a very long time to fix. I think what leads us astray most often in our work with challenging kids is the fact that people think they can fix this kid quickly. I will say this, doing the right thing never takes as long as doing the wrong thing. That I can promise you. Once you've identified lagging skills and unsolved problems, plan B is the core intervention of this model.